Welcome aboard, cadets. I'm Commodore Lawson of the Terran Stellar Navy. This is the Artemis Spaceship Bridge Simulator. The year is 2240, and Earth is in the midst of an alien war on multiple fronts. Torgoth, Arvonian, and Kralian forces have allied against us, and are attacking stations near the neutral zone. Your primary goal is to defend Terran space stations in this sector, surviving until all enemies have been eliminated or accepted surrender. Stations are your power source and weapons factories. Keep the stations alive, and they'll keep you alive. Your crew consists of the captain, science officer, comms officer, helmsman, weapons officer, and engineer, along with support pilots. Each of you has a role. Here are your standard operating procedures. First up, science officer. This is your console, a long-range view of the entire sector. The Artemis is the green icon, and stations are represented by yellow icons. Tap and drag the map to view the entire sector. Tap any contact to view details and lock it for scan. Then, tap the scan button. Use these zoom level buttons to focus the sensors on selected contacts. During a scan, you may select other targets, but only one contact can be scanned at a time. The first scan reveals the ship type, ID, direction, distance, and overall shield strength. Hostiles will turn red. Friendly ships are blue. Your second scan reveals enemy ship special abilities, captain history, and defensive weaknesses. Comms and weapons officers need this information. As you find hazards, notify the helmsman. These may include nebula, asteroid fields, mines, and singularities. You have critical information to share with the team. Be ready to answer questions from the captain at any moment. Next, communications. Your console shows messages received and buttons to send messages and commands. To send messages, select the type of message on the left, select a recipient, and then the message you want to send. Messages arrive in the right column. Tap messages to zoom in to their details. Stations reply with detailed information about their shields, inventory, and manufacturing progress. Comms may tell stations what torpedoes to build. And, before the Artemis docks at a station, send a docking request to speed up the resupply process. Taunt enemy captains to temporarily draw them away from our stations or defenseless transports. Damaged or overwhelmed enemies may accept surrender. Other allied ships will also communicate. You can direct defenseless ships out of harm's way, direct ships to continue their voyages, or ask combat vessels for support. Other mission critical information is provided only to comms. Pay attention, messages may arrive at any moment, and some may prove vital to your mission. At the start of your mission, hail every other ship so you're aware of the tactical situation. Some ships provide side quests, some may be traps. As the comms officer, you have information no one else has. Be sure to inform the captain and crew what you hear and what you're saying. Helm, you're the pilot of the Artemis. This is your console. The right control stick turns right and left for maneuvering. The left throttle operates impulse engines forward, middle stop position, and reverse. Engage warp one by holding the right trigger release to drop out of warp. The left throttle buttons provide additional warp levels up to four. To dock with the station, approach the station to a distance less than 600, center the controllers and throttle to middle stop, then press the request dock button. You have control of the main screen. Use this hat switch to change the external view. Press the switch to face the view forward either side, or behind the ship. Two additional buttons provide close tactical and long-range maps. And finally, this rocker switch controls the zoom level of your close-range display. While in flight, avoid collisions with asteroids and steer clear of proximity mines. We don't want you to prematurely end the mission in a fireball. And speaking of fireballs, that brings us to the weapons officer. 
You control the shields, long range torpedoes, and close quarters beams. Shields consume energy to provide temporary protection against threats. Torpedo tubes arm and fire long range weaponry and special payloads. Refer to the payload chart at your console for details on each payload and its use. Guided payloads require three steps. Load, lock, and fire. Step 1, load. Open the torpedo payload list, tap a class, then tap load on any empty tube. After the tube is loaded, proceed to step 2, lock a target. Select a target to lock it. Pay attention. If you do not lock a target, guided payloads fire forward only and automatically lock the first available target, friendly or enemy. After you load a tube and lock a target, you're ready to fire the armed payload. Guided torpedoes remember their target when fired. You may immediately lock another target and fire another tube. Use the zoom buttons to focus on nearby target groups or find long-range targets. Maximum target lock distance is about 4K. In close quarters, beams are the weapon of choice. This firing arc indicates the beam's fire zone. Tap any contact in this zone to lock the beams. They fire continually while the contact is in this zone. Your science officer has intel about enemy shields. Tune the beam frequency to hit the weakest shield for extra damage potential. Pay attention, beams will not fire unless you lock a target. When the target is destroyed, beams will stop firing. Finally, never select anything you don't intend to destroy. The engineer allocates energy and coolant to maximize ship performance. Your console provides details of the energy level, manifest, damage control status, power levels, and coolant balance. Each dot on the damage control grid represents a subsystem. Diamond icons indicate the position of damage control teams. Damaged systems turn red. In autonomous mode, damage control teams will move automatically to make repairs. Repairs can be more efficient if you guide teams manually, but novice engineers should leave the teams in autonomous mode. You also manage energy to eight ship systems. Beams, torpedoes, sensors, maneuvering, impulse, warp, and front and rear shields. These power sliders range from zero to 300%. More power equals better performance. Overcharge the front shields when facing an enemy head to head. Overcharge warp when traveling long distances. Overcharge maneuvering during hard turns, and impulse during combat and docking. Of course, overcharging has a price. Heat builds up while systems are overcharged. Heat damages systems, and injures damage control teams. Reduce power levels to 100% or less to stop gaining heat. Counteract heat by activating coolant units up to 8 at a time. To cool multiple systems, you'll need to share the units and balance them carefully. Again, you can only activate eight coolant units at once. To assist you during this mission, we've provided preset configurations of power and coolant. Use these presets to your advantage. By quickly responding to what the ship needs, a skilled engineer can greatly improve your chances of success.